right after the shoot, I put myself involved in an accident. I'm fine, guys. You don't have to worry about me. If I wasn't fine, I wouldn't be providing this particular video. Uh, but I just wanted to let you guys know the, the, the length we go to provide content for you people. So when you're watching, please watch, share, like, and subscribe, which is very much important. But that's beside the point. I'm going to show you why I had an accident. I think some was there. Yeah. Uh, I was just leaving. You know what? That's not why you came here to watch the video. Right. In today's video, the idea is to share with you the knowledge I have when it comes to sumo photography. It's been a long while I did any content concerning sumo photography. I have even stripped off my sumo content from my Instagram page and I just left it on my website. So yeah, go check out my website. Some of my sumo content are still there if you want to see how good I still am when it comes to sumo content. But yeah, in this video, we'll be learning about how to harness the natural beauty of the sunlight to capture standing images when it comes to somewhere right i'll probably share some valuable tips and insights on shooting somewhere in natural light and uncover the mistakes to avoid along the way so whether you're a modern somewhere photographer or you simply want to enhance your photography skills this video is to basically guide you in the direction of creating very stunning and captivating images when it comes to sumo photography so let's just dive right into some of the things to look out for when it comes to sumo photography from my point of view that is if you feel like i'm good at it this is what i do normally all the time so i'm going to share them and you probably take some tips out of it the first thing i want to talk about is embracing the sun's glow right when it comes to the sun, when it comes to swimwear, the sun is your best friend. I see people taking along strobes to beaches or strobes to go shoot somewhere. I am not discouraging that, but the look you get from the natural light will probably be different from the look you get from the artificial light. I remember this quote from a friend one time. I asked him why he doesn't use lights in outdoors. The only thing he said was, the natural, the colors from the natural light, the colors that get registered on the camera when you're using natural light, is far different from the colors you see when you're shooting with artificial light. I practice sometimes and I realize the difference. There's so much, there's sorry, there's so little a difference, but it makes so much sense. So understand how the sun works on your images with respect to colors. Understand how the sun works when it comes to creating the kind of look you're going for on the set shoot you're doing. Mostly, I like to shoot with hard lights when it comes to swimwear photography. I don't enjoy diffuse lighting at all. I want to see my model accentuated when it comes to the shapes, when it comes to how the hard light is um, cutting the model out, when it comes to the colors popping in the bag, when it comes to looking at how teal or how blue the sky will be, how melanated, that's if I'm shooting a dark skin model, how melanated the skin tones will look like. I mean, it just falls right in place. So understanding the sun's glow, embracing it, making sure it works for you will probably help you because the sun is your ally, right? The sun is always your ally. I encourage people to always look at shooting around 12 to 4 p.m. when you're in Ghana when it comes to shooting swimming because within this time frame is when you get to experience that hard light coming in from the sun i did a recent video talking about the qualities of light and you can use that knowledge here also so qualities of light in terms of hard light and soft lighting the hard light coming in from the sun is always best when you're shooting somewhere you can shoot somewhere with soft lighting too but you would probably see the difference between the hard light and the soft lights. Check the video up there. I'll link it up here. Now I want to talk about is choosing the ideal location for your shoot. I think so far we we don't put much energy in location scouting. I recently developed that habit of moving around and taking pictures at locations I would want to shoot at in the future. This next door beach we want to shoot is along the stretch of Labadi. I went there, I think, a week before to go and scout the location. I've been there, I think, three years ago. The eyes I used to look at it three years ago and the eyes I looked at it through now, 
are two different eyes with respect to the knowledge I have gained. I now understand how shadow plays affect your images. I now understand the direction of, of how the light also affects the images. I understand how colors work, what to combine and what not to combine as I am looking at getting closer to the sea, what to do and not what to do. So this location scouting helped to prepare me for the shoots I was going to do. I, I, I then realized, oh, this is actually something I can tell people to do. Take a time of a day, two, or maybe, maybe on a Sunday when you are not shooting. Don't go there and think about places to shoot. Go there a day before, wherever you are. If you plan on shooting at a particular location, go to the location, scout the location, take out your phone, take pictures, envision what you want to see through the pictures you take with your phone. And trust me, when you are ready to go and shoot, it becomes way easier and it's quicker and faster. It saves a lot of time, right? Time is everything, right? Timing is everything. So if I'm able to save time and money by doing all that with respect to scouting, on the day of the shoot, it becomes easier. You know what you're about. The only difference then will be if the sun decides to play with your feelings. <laughs> I don't write with your feelings. So with regards to time, I normally tell people to look at shooting somewhere around 12 p.m. to 4 p.m. ish when the sun is still up and is giving you hard shadows. If you're looking at creating alongside golden hours, which I don't enjoy because it kind of takes away the sweetness of the skin tones, I like to show you how melanated a dark skin model is. I don't want all that golden feel on it. And yes, we know golden hour, everybody enjoys it, but I don't. I don't enjoy it too much. Sometimes it works, sometimes I just don't enjoy it. So when you time your shoots right, when you know the time to get to your location, how the sun is going to cast at certain locations scouted, you will then become better at shooting this remote thing. You then know what to do, how to do it, and at what particular moment to do it. I, I find the sweet spot around 3 p.m. So that's how I go about shooting my somewhere. So uncover the importance of timing your shoot to capture the desired light and effects, like I was explaining, and probably discover those sweet spots when the sun casts those warm and flattering glow on your subject. So my sweet spots when shooting somewhere in Ghana should be around 3 p.m. when it's a sunny condition. Living in Accra or living in Ghana, I'll say Ghana, then I'll say Accra. Yes. When it rains the previous day, it's it's likely the next day is going to be as clear as it comes. I mean, that's what I experienced. That's what one of the creatives I collaborated on the shoot told me. And lo and behold, when we got there, I mean, the cloudiness was there, but the sun still popped up. And in terms of cloudiness, it was just moving clouds, not stationary overcast clouds moving clouds when they block the sun and they come back and they block the sun and they come back. I mean, we, we, we could work with that. So the next thing I would want to talk about is overcoming cloudy days. I mean, when you get there and all of a sudden the place gets cloudy, what do you do? To be very honest, when it comes to me, I'll just postpone the shoot. I'll let the model understand that. The kind of content we want to create with the sunlight will probably look different from the kind of content we'll create with cloudy condition so if the model understands my creativity or my creativeness she would agree to postpone to a better date that will work for both of us but if that is not possible i encourage you to send along a reflector i don't mean a bounce card i always push the agenda of a wise bounce card i am talking about a shiny reflector a shiny reflector and a body lotion and an oil-based body lotion. Overcast or cloudy days you usually don't have a lot of sunlight coming through. You're looking at the quality of light, which is a soft light, very, very, very soft lighting. So you need to enhance it. The idea of the sun hitting the subject or the hard light hitting the subject is one to create the shadows to accentuate. Okay, the word was accentuate. Accentuate the model shape and give that shiny glow on the skin right using the reflector 
you are directing all the loss of light back onto the subject you're shooting and you're going to get that shiny glow from the oil-based body lotion so i i unfortunately i forgot body lotion for this particular shoot but i'm going to use post processing to bring or enhance the glow on the skin so that is one mistake i also did on this shoot and i hope you overcome it in your your next shoot right the next thing i want to talk about is poses and composition posing and composition is very very key when it comes to swimwear i have found that shooting somewhere from top down there's something is it a hero no the hero shot is from down top so top down or the bird's eye view not a total bird's eye view but there's an angle you shoot from the top which shows everything you want to see on the model if the model is sitting i i prefer this angle when the model is sitting or lying on the ground or you know yeah sitting and lying on the ground because with that with that angle i get to see everything on the model when the model is standing i shoot eye level and when the model is on the hill and i want to shoot it's just the sky i shoot below level so the angles you shoot at which will then influence your composition helps when it comes to shooting somewhere the poses are key i don't manufacture poses in my head i also look out poses on Pinterest, on other seasoned swimwear photographers like Sadowska, like Iron Rudnick, when she's shooting somewhere. I mean, I look at all these poses and kind of put them together and show them to the model I'm shooting. Usually, some might work with them, some might not work with them, depending on the kind of model you're shooting, right? So, knowing your poses and composition will obviously help you as a swimwear photographer. So diving into the art of posing and composition for swimwear photography, considering how the sunlight will interact with the model and the surrounding elements will help you create visually appealing images. The last thing I want to talk about is avoiding common mistakes. So the common mistake like forgetting your body lotion, the common mistake like not knowing the appropriate mode to shoot in when you're shooting outdoors. I shoot aperture priority when I'm shooting others because I don't trust the sun. I mean, the sun can move in and come out behind clouds. That's exactly what we experienced during um, this shoot. Aperture priority probably helped because I wouldn't then be moving around to set my my camera shutter speed to match whatever it is I'm shooting. I only have to set up my aperture and just expose with exposure compensation i think i have a video on aperture priority but if you think that's not enough you can go and watch more on aperture priority yeah so avoid forgetting your body lotion make sure you're shooting in aperture priority and make sure you understand how shadows work on your images don't overexpose your shadows don't put reflectors in the removing all the shadows that are supposed to be created learn how to use a reflector to reflect an amount of light or an amount of glow onto your subject not to kill the shadows but to open it up quite a bit to allow your images to look better and captivating and flawless when it comes to somewhere so i think i have said a lot and if you gained much information from this kindly leave a like subscribe share if you haven't subscribed yet my channel is all about teaching and enhancing your knowledge in photography so share share to other people make sure you subscribe so i think that's it um i'll probably enhance the images in post processing with some of my digital products so link in the description make sure you check out my digital store i sell very good products that can enhance your images if you're looking at starting from some when it comes to color grading or editing in photoshop thank you so much for watching today's video I appreciate all you guys do for me. Like, subscribe, share, and last but not least, practice. Practicing is so much important to me. If you don't practice what you learn, you just gain the knowledge and no technical skill. I'll see you in my next video. Peace.